chick lied, Alice cried, and I totally called it, you guys. Let's break down episode 219 on Sweetwater Secrets. OMG, River Babes, that was such a good episode. I'm your host, Leanne Aguilera, and this is the Sweetwater Secrets After Show for episode 219, chapter 32, Prisoners, which was jam-packed with shocking storylines. Hello, Betty. You miss me. And the most chic funeral I have ever seen. Yeah, which is why I'm wearing this, but now I'm kind of over it, so I'm just gonna toss it. Okay. Today I'm bringing you exclusive interviews from Machen Amick and Skeet Ulrich talking all about the phallus relationship revolution. Plus, get ready for a seriously sharp list of hisses and kisses. It came from the core of my bosom. But first, it's time to recap the biggest headlines of the week in the blue and gold breakdown. Oh, did you think the musical episode was over? Well, think again, because the episode opened with Cheryl singing a somber tune for their fallen vixen Midge. There's a golden sky. And fresh off of the triumphant takedown of her mother, Cheryl unleashed verbal whiplash on her newest victim, Sheriff Keller. Your days of failing this town over and over again are numbered. After some hazing, it looks like Sheriff Keller has decided to quit. But instead of bringing in someone new, might I suggest you just let Betty and Jughead take over the job? Clearly, they're doing a much better job than anyone else in town. Because Bughead went back to the Sisters of Quiet Mercy and obtained a photo of Betty's brother. Her real brother, that is. Turns out Chick has been impersonating Charles Smith this whole time. That is your real son, Mom. Not this con artist. There is an intruder, male, Caucasian, possibly armed, certainly weird, in my kitchen. Are you angry? Yeah, me too. Luckily, Betty's aggressive side helped ease our frustrations. Now, to make matters even more satisfying, turns out we were right all along. Alice revealed to FP that he really was the father of her long-lost baby. I named him Charles. Unfortunately, it looks like we'll never get to meet the real Charles because Chick killed him. I got in a fight. I lost control. I didn't mean to hurt him. And what's that sound? Oh, that's the ominous and official return of the Black Hood. Betty once again teamed up with the mysterious man and offered to relinquish Chick, aka the ultimate sinner, over to the Black Hood. Better run, Chickadee. And it looks like the truth behind the hood is finally close to being revealed because Betty is slowly but surely putting the pieces together. Mom. Where's Dad? I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. It's Hal. It's totally Hal. I'm not quite sure, but I think it's Hal. They don't know that we know they know we know. But wait, there's more. Now, to make matters even worse, the ultra-vile Nick St. Clair made an obnoxious return. How you been, Ronnie? You miss me? Yeah, Veronica's ex-bae was hell-bent on revenge, so he kidnapped Archie and demanded a hefty ransom. And when Veronica couldn't pay, Nick suggested a stomach-churning alternative. A bedroom rendezvous while Archie watched. You're a reptile. But hell hath no fury like a Veronica scorned, and while Nick thought that he was about to get lucky, our raven-haired beauty had her own idea of revenge. Which leads us into our seven seconds in heaven. With Nick passed out on the bedroom floor, Varchi reunited with a swoon-worthy kiss and some couples bonding. What are we gonna do with him now? Concierge is sending up a power drill. I'm kidding. I don't know V. I hear the couple who tortures together stays together. Meanwhile, Betty and Jughead gave us some adorable Sherlock Holmes and Watson vibes, and it was so great to see them teaming up even though it was under some pretty particularly disturbing circumstances. As for Phallus, who else was ugly crying right along with Alice when she dropped two bombshells to FP? First she revealed that she carried his child, and then was forced to reveal that their real son had died. He's dead because of me. <sighs> My heart. Luckily, the Riverdale actors are A-OK -okay in real life. In fact, take a look at what Machen Almec and Skeet Ulrich adorably told me when I pressed them about Alice and FP's possible parenting. Is FP Chick's father? 
Next question. Doesn't he look like a combination of the two? He of sure does. That's a layered. That's a layered answer there, which uh, you're you're gonna start to see in a couple episodes. You'll come to a conclusion. Uh, okay. I was right about FP being the father of Alice's baby, just not that Chick straight up stole Charles' identity. But hey, I'm still proud of all of us for theorizing in the comments. Okay, cool! And if you're still dying for more answers, head over to ET Online and read my full interview with Hart Denton all about Chick's true intentions. I'll include the link below. What are you waiting for? But now let's dive straight into this week's hisses and kisses, but I've gotta warn ya, it's a long list this week. Starting off, the biggest hiss <coughs> is of course going to Chick for straight up stealing Charles Smith's identity and for making Alice believe that she inadvertently murdered her own son, and lastly, for actually killing him. I hope you get what's coming to you, Chick. It's your very own angel of death. Hisses to the Black Hood, aka Hal Cooper, for keeping us in the dark about your motives. Also, you kind of waddle when you run. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Hisses to Nick St. Clair for returning to Riverdale with a new douche-tastic beard, and for torturing Archie and blackmailing Veronica to try and get her into bed. An extra hiss to the Lodges for not paying Archie's ransom, or even helping at all. Hisses to Ethel for sending those fake letters as the Black Hood. I wasn't gonna hurt anybody. I just wanted the part. Since you were the victim of a particularly vicious hiss last week, I'm gonna ease up on you slightly and just say this. Go away, girl, you bug. Do you know what it means to clap back, Raymond? Because I do. Hisses to the fact that Tony was MIA from this episode. She's a vixen too, and so is Josie. Where were they at Midge's funeral? Was their absence the reason that Cheryl was particularly prickly in this episode? We need answers. Oh, and on that note, this is to the fact that we didn't find out anything about what happened backstage at the musical. Why was Fang in Midge's dressing room? What's the deal with Moose? Don't make me wait. This is to the fact that Betty casually lied to Jughead about chatting with the Black Hood. But I did love that her lie coincided with our theory that it's Hal. Is that your mom? Uh, no, it's my dad. And then I'm sending so many kisses to Betty for kicking Chick's butt, to Jughead for standing by his girl, and to FP for having Jughead's best interest at heart. He really is such a great dad. Kisses to Veronica for getting her revenge on Nick St. Clair, and for being the only one to come to Archie's rescue. Also, way to go girl, I love the way you stood up to your parents this week. Help me out of whatever nefarious schemes you're cooking up. Kisses to Maid Chinomic for her heart-wrenching performance. I had your baby. Right. He came to see me and I turned him away. And to the Riverdale writers because this episode was jam-packed with twists and was one of my favorites of this season. You did it! Congratulations! Ta-da! We're done! That's 19 episodes down and only three more to go. Now join me for next week's Sweetwater Secrets preview show of episode 220, chapter 33, Shadow of a Doubt, for even more exclusive scoops straight from your favorite Riverdale stars. Plus, head over to ET Online right now, if the link is below, to read my full interview with Hart Denton, aka Chick, to find out if Chick is really gone for good. But first, please give this video a like and then hit the comments and tell me your top hisses and kisses of the episode. Did Nick St. Clair deserve a bigger punishment? And do you really think Hal Cooper is the Black Hood? I do. Tell me, River Babes, and until next time, kisses to you.